pretty much flat with a little bit of a bump along the way, which I think will be an opportunity to this going to be one for those that can uh, detach themselves and go for something a little bit more like a, a time trial effort. We'll have cameras on the riders that are racing remotely as well and try and bring you as much of the, the flavor of the suffering and exactly what they're going through across this uh, one hour of racing effort. The riders, many of them have been in the hall, you know, made her there just uh, warming up and they're through the warm-up uh, uh, procedure now, and they've done, well, a hectic amount of riding on their home trainers already to this point in the proceedings, various different uh, rehearsals and warm-up procedures during the day. So a few of those riders, I think, will be, uh, will be feeling it already as we get set to get into it very shortly. Doch, was von Meda zu sagen hat. So, let's talk to another Swiss athlete, Gino Meda. So, ready for race? Uh, I think as ready as you can be on uh, November Friday evening, but uh, I'm looking forward. I hope we will have a party with you, but uh, one hour in the sun, uh, one hour on the power meter, it's not really a party. Did you ever a race like this? Um, I had uh, the fun to be at the start also of the first Digital Swiss 5. I think uh, some of these power records still stand today and I really don't looking forward to reproduce them. Also er war natürlich mit dabei bei der Premiere der Digital Swiss 5 auf den Strecken der Tour de Suisse. Er sagt, einige seiner Power-Rekorde stehen noch heute und äh, ja, er weiß nicht genau, ob die heute fallen werden, beziehungsweise er weiß nicht genau, ob er sich darauf freuen kann, diese Rekorde zu toppen, denn äh, ja, Rolle heißt auch immer leiden. So, uh, on the, the Ruby platform, cycling means uh, in a race suffering as well. We are looking forward to see you, Gino. Good luck. As much as possible. Uh, we're now within the final three minute countdown to this event. Uh, I think I've already mentioned that it's real time videos that we use for on the, uh, on the Ruby platform. It's a fascinating uh, concept, really. And they have videoed the entire circuit and it's the riders that scroll their way through uh, the route that is uh, well, it's going to be taking the riders from the Zeebrugge in Lucerne, then heading along Lake Lucerne, reaches the Swiss Museum of Transport after a short while, then uh, past the Hofkirk Leo Degger, an extraordinary piece of of, um, of architecture. I'll take you through the course very shortly. Let's hear from Jason Osborne, a man resplendent in that beautiful rainbow tunic and sporting one of the most extraordinary and most wonderful haircuts in world cycling. Let's hear from Jason now. So, einen haben wir noch, meine Damen und Herren. One more. We have one minute and 50 to go. Let's uh, talk very short to the world champion, Jason Osborne. So, welcome first in Zurich, Jason. Um, we talked to two of your guys who do not uh, so often uh, racing on a home trainer. So, what are your tips for this race for one hour full gas? Um, yeah, it's my first time on this platform, obviously. Um, I've been racing on Swift like most of the time. So, for me, it's also a new experience to learn how the platform works, but um, it's definitely going to be a fast start. Everyone is out of the gun uh, really fast, so be patient there. Uh, and um, yeah, I think it's going to be during the whole race uh, always uh, a lot of suffering and uh, yeah, looking forward. You are the only one uh, riding with uh, headwind. Is this an advantage? Why do you do it? No one wants headwind. Yeah, it basically cools your body down. And uh, I was lucky that I didn't forget it. Um, my mat, I forgot, but the ventilators are not. So hopefully it will give me some, some watts for 
saving for today. We're looking forward. Thank you so much. World Champion Jason Osborne, meine Damen und Herren. Und damit haben wir Jason noch 30 Osborne, Sekunden. Ja, wir haben there. ihn natürlich gefragt, was kann er hier? Just reasons want to keep him a little bit cool down and also I think to keep that hairstyle looking kind of windswept and uh, and interesting. He's a fascinating character. Chatting to him early earlier on, he's of course an Olympic silver medalist in rowing and surprised everyone with that UCI World Championship win at the end of 2020. And he's back on the home trainer to see what he can do about taking the victory in this first event in digital Swiss. Five. Of course, uh, they did have Digital Swiss 5 uh, last year, and how wonderful that was. We're ready to go, and we're flying into the start of this uh, first of the Digital Swiss 5 events. Switching across to the Ruby platform, we can see that has been the anticipated fast start, as uh, Jason Osborne had anticipated. You've got to be at pretty much maximum revs and maximum power from the minute the countdown clock goes down to zero, and everybody has uh, gotten up to a pretty intense level. There is drafting in Ruby. It hasn't always been on this platform, but it's recently been introduced, and I think it's going to be an absolute game changer in every sense as to how people ride this event. They will get a draft effect, and you will be able to save a certain amount of watts by riding in the slipstream of other riders. In the early moments, Jan Saska has clearly come uh, with his, uh, his game face and his... Uh, his game legs on board as well. The 19-year-old Czech mountain bike racer, straight out of the gate, absolutely flying. Ruby specialized rider from the uh, Czech Republic, so he'll be very familiar with this platform. And he's straight into action. And look at that, Jason Osborne. He really understands the dynamics and the power required. And as a, as a, a rowing silver medalist, indeed, in the men's lightweight skulls in Tokyo, not so long ago, he's uh, now transitioning across to cycling full-time raced with the quick step squad on the road towards the end of the road season as a stagiaire as a as a, a trial run for a full-time switch to cycling next year that's the anticipated run and he's uh, close to the head of affairs reto hollenstein racing remotely is also looking in uh, some pretty good shape at the moment. The veteran Swiss rider, he's tall, almost two meters tall indeed. And he's got big levers, big engine, big power, and he's put himself into prime position. He's up towards the front. Connie Loser as well, the uh, mountain bike racer, trained roofer as I've mentioned. It's, uh, he says, his first online race. I'm not sure I believe him. That's a remarkable effort to get uh, close to the head of affairs. It's so easy to get dropped in the early moments of these events. And if you lose the uh, the draft, if you lose that slipstream effect, it really is uh, tough to recover from that. We'll scroll down through the list and give you some of the names to, to conjure with, uh, just to remind you of the riders. Five different squads. We've got uh, Basel, Lausanne, Lugano, Luzerne, and Zurich for Basel. It's Boris Stein to remind you. Uh, Corin Lebecki's remote, as indeed is Franz Lushka, the uh, triathlete. Jason Osborne and Laura Chacon here in the uh, in the hall in Zurich. Uh, in, for the Lausanne squad, Alessandra Keller, the 25-year-old Swiss mountain bike racer, former junior and under-23 world champion, is here in the hall. Jan Sashka is in flying form in the early moments and he's safely in the pack as they uh, they race through the early stages. It's pretty much a flat run through to about the halfway point of this lap and then we hit a little lump which could be a, a, an opportunity for a bit of separation. Mauro Schmidt, as I've mentioned, the 21-year-old uh, Swiss rider who's uh, made a name for himself. He's a real breakthrough uh, performer with a stage victory in the Giro d'Italia earlier on this year. He's in the hall uh, remotely racing for them. Sammy Hurseler, the uh, triathlete, uh, veteran uh, rider indeed, is um, an Ironman competitor. How much is he enjoying the hurt that he's having to put on himself? Well, he's mid-pack at the moment, sitting 11th in the group as we uh, scroll through the order. Zuzana Zafarova, I've mentioned, the mountain bike uh, uh, rider, 20-year-old Czech rider, Zafarova. Sitting at the outside of the uh, the top 20 at the moment, she's uh, flirting with disaster really, but she's managing to keep herself in the in the mix. And uh, the Lugana squad, just to run through their their numbers, Hannah Devet is the 23-year-old triathlete from Belgium, third in the Belgian national championships back in 2019. Herman Pernsteiner here in the hall, uh, as indeed is Hayden Wild, uh, Hayden Wild, I should say, the 24-year-old triathlete from New Zealand. Ninth in the world, first in Oceania. He's a fine triathlete, uh, but he hasn't had to go splashing his way into the start of this competition. How well has he, and indeed how well have others, warmed up 
into this one. Uh, Loanne Duvoisin, the 23-year-old Swiss triathlete. She's the World uh, Triathlon Cross Champion. She likes to ride a mountain bike on a road bike here and on her home trainer. Slightly different uh, uh, feel of an event. She's racing remotely, as indeed is Sean Bennett, the 25-year-old uh, US rider with Team Quebec and Nextash. Uh, second on a stage of the Amgen Tour in California a few years ago. And he's, uh, he's racing at home, as indeed is Thomas Steger, the uh, triathlon rider, 29-year-old Austrian, fifth in the world, long distance triathlon championships of late. Just uh, two teams to let you know about. Jakob Kadleks, uh, we've mentioned, as indeed Connie Loser, uh, Martin Van Riel and Nina Deren are here in the hall for the Luzerne squad and racing remotely. The uh, world champion of 2007 on the road, Marta Bastianelli of the Ale uh, BT Ljubljana squad, racing for Luzerne here today, as indeed is her road teammate, Mavi Garcia, 27 year old Spanish rider. And the Zurich squad, just to remind you, Adrian Bifford is the uh, triathlon uh, competitor that is here uh, racing alongside Gino Mader, Marlon Reusser, and Reto Hollenstein and Zgabu Grame are racing remotely. A little bit of a push on here from Reto Hollenstein. Here in the hall, I can tell you, Marlon Reusser, for all the efforts that she's making, she's still managing to give the crowd a little bit of entertainment. I tell you what, she again also claims that this is her very first uh, indoor competition, her first uh, uh, online bike race experience, but she seems to have got the hang of it. She's safely in the middle of the group, running around about 11, 12, 13, that kind of order, staying in the wheels and staying in the, uh, in the slipstream, getting that draft effect. Just to remind you, it's the top two male teams and the top female team uh, time from our position at the end of this race will count for your team. So uh, just how these uh, riders and these teams will have worked it out to try and maybe assist and ensure that they've got as many of their teammates close to the head of affairs when they come to the conclusion of this event. Well, that uh, remains to be seen. We're very much racing as a pack as things currently stand. It's, uh, well, the entire group at uh, just over six and a half minutes of bike racing complete to this point. I don't think anyone has been discommoded or uh, detached from the lead group at the moment. I'll try and scroll down through the order and get a sense of exactly what's uh, what's happening amongst the leaders. But it's it's fairly intense work at the moment, but you sense that everyone is uh, by, by evidence, I think, by the fact that Marlon Reusser was able to just uh, wave to the crowd here in the stadium in the South Sport Halle, normally plays host to a uh, handball team. Well, they're on the road this weekend, so they've left the uh, the hall free for the 20 bikes. There are three amateurs as well trying to uh, stay in here and stay in the mix as well. They're not part of the race action proper. Jason Osborne hits the front. Horace Stein is uh, there, thereabouts for the Basel squad. And Holland Stein is making his presence felt. Gino Mader as well is ensuring that he's not uh, always on the front, but he's never far from it. Thomas Steger as well is uh, floating and gravitating towards the head of affairs. And they just hit this little drag. It's not particularly long, but it gets up to 10% in places. And this is where it's really going to hurt. Remind you, we're on the first of four ascents of this climb. First of four 11.8-kilometer uh, laps. And we're just at around about the uh, halfway point of the first of four laps. So a little bit of mental calculation uh, would suggest we're at around about one eighth distance. Aaron Steiner is towards the front of the hall. How close to the front of the group is he? Well, he's uh, fourth on my screen and uh, certainly doing a really, really solid job to stay close to the head of affairs in this early running. For uh, Jason Osborne, the haircut still looks absolutely perfect, but the zip has come down already. He's starting to feel it. I think they all are. And uh, you can tell by riders getting out of the saddle that this is very much a hill. So we plunge over the top of that hill and into the descent, but you can't afford to Free wheel here in Ruby. You gotta keep riding, gotta keep making the effort. Over six watts per kilo being pumped out by Thomas Steger, close to the head of affairs. That's the kind of numbers required when we hit these 
uh, moments and periods of particular intensity. Hayden Wild well to the four as well. 5.2 watts per kilo, just spikes up over six watts. Massive investment, and huge numbers being put out. The, the record for this lap was, uh, was recorded a few days ago by an amateur rider at something in the order of about 3.8 watts per kilo. I think we're going to, we're certainly gonna have a record lap now at the conclusion of this uh, lap for all that it was a, uh, a standing start. I suspect uh, we're gonna have a brand new lap record here. Osborne on the front. Doesn't look like a huge effort, does it? He's definitely got a relatively uh, uh, low cadence. Suggests that he's got big watts. A little bit of a wave to the crowd. I'm in control of this effort. I can handle this. Let's get a look at the overhead as we race through Luzerne. And it, uh, well, you would get, uh, forgive him for thinking that Gino Mader has managed to take uh, his leave of the rest. The Timing screen still suggesting that it's indeed uh, very much all together. Mader sitting fifth uh, place. Osborne solid on the front at the moment. Take a little momentary promenade down by the river. This uh, beautiful circuit that takes the uh, riders through Lucerne's old town. Famous for those beautiful frescoed houses, the picturesque squares, made it uh, a world famous destination for tourism. Short detour into the old town and then we uh, head a little bit later past the uh, Bourbaki Panorama, one of the uh, few remaining monumental circular paintings in the world. 112 meters long, well worth a visit if you ever get a chance. I'm sure these riders will <laughs> take the opportunity to, uh, to look at it, heads down. Nader, Osborne and Steger maintaining a position close to the head of affairs and following that climb, let's see if there's been much damage done, whether that's allowed uh, riders to take their leave of the rest. Steger, it looks as if, and uh, Osborne, Wild, Pernsteiner and uh, Gino Mader looks as if they've detached themselves from the rest. Redo, Hollenstein is leading the charge behind Boris Stein for uh, Team Basel. So it's looking good for uh, Team Lugano, Team Basel, Team Zurich, and Lugano too. Lugano put two riders into this breakaway group. There's Steger and Hayden Wild for the Lugano squad. It's going well in Luzerne at the moment, and uh, plenty of those riders are here in the South Sports Halle in Zurich. Yeah, behind Hollenstein uh, is is racing almost solo. He's got Boris Stein for company, or within a couple of uh, of meters, just trying to get on terms. And then behind them, there's a, a group is reassembling, following that little grippy little climb. Martin Van Riel sitting eighth uh, last time we heard, ahead of Marlon Reusser, Adrian Bifford, Jakob Kadlitz, Sean Bennett is uh, is part of that group as well. Connie Loesser, uh, Saskia Husseler and the rest, and a uh, little bit of a daylight starting to appear between themselves and the rest. Hannah De Vett uh, running in 17th place, Franz Luschke, Alessandra Keller 19th, and at the outside uh, of the top 20 at the moment is Corin Lebecki. Uh, Corin Rivera, as was, racing for Team Basel, but uh, worth reminding you, of course, that there is an individual trophy for men and women, and indeed they are racing for their team. The team competition, I think, is always one that, uh, particularly in cycling, that uh, everyone really feels a sort of an onus of responsibility, and uh, it's it's the, the element, I think, that really uh, gets people motivated to try and make as big an effort as they possibly can to, to stay in touch. Check on Mavi Garcia, just sitting in 23rd at the moment. Marta Bastianelli is close to, uh, to the wheel of her Team Luzerne. Team. And uh, that's the current situation with the watts per kilogram. Just get a sense of what uh, Jason Osborne is putting out. Over around, around about five and a half to six watts per kilo. That's what's required. Looks like a low cadence. It's kind of uh, stepped up a little bit. And he looks so in control of his effort. He's the most remarkable uh, physical specimen, isn't he? He can really pull those oars and he can re he's got such an engine, such extraordinary uh, ability. Huge lungs to go with them. 
and it's uh, 6.2 watts per kilo right now. That's what it takes, and that's uh, it's having an effect, to say the least. Osborne starting to open up a little bit of a gap over the rest. Indeed, according to my timing screen, it would suggest that he could well be as much as 100 meters up the road. So Osborne is no flash in the pan. The world champion is showing what he's capable of as we try and get up to the leaders, Steger. Pernsteiner, Mader also pushing hard to get on terms. They're going to have to work together. There is a draft effect here. There is an opportunity to save a little bit of energy in the wheels of the other riders. And if they're to get on terms with, uh, with Jason Osborne, this is still early stages. And coming towards the conclusion of this first lap. So the final, let's get a look at this, uh, at this finish. If it comes down to a sprint, this is what it's going to look like. Pan flat, as you might expect, as we come into the finishing zone, the final 100 meters. It's not uh, an issue here, of course. Under the kite, cross the line. And Osborne still extending his advantage. He's gaining a meter here and a meter there. And his uh, watts per kilo output is is noticeably higher than the rest, isn't it? He's maintaining this intensity at uh, five and a half to six watts per kilo consistently. Gino Mader is kind of spiking up around the five and a half watts uh, mark by times, but starting to feel it, uh, I think, a little bit. Pernsteiner, Steger have made it for company, but uh, only just massive effort being made here by, by Gino Mader. He told us in, in advance of this that the idea of making these efforts in a cold November is, well, oh, you got to give the crowd his very best effort. He's sitting, uh, as things currently stand, close to the head of affairs. Indeed, it's this Pernsteiner that we're actually looking at. Yeah, indeed, it's Pernsteiner just uh, flirting with disaster here, hanging on grimly onto the back of the group at the moment. Steger, Mader, Mader and Wild working together. And the riders in the hall, almost oblivious to the presence of the other riders. It's lovely and cool here. We mentioned that uh, just uh, one rider bringing a fan with him. Fan in the real sense rather than any virtual sense. And uh, But it's not it's, it's be necessary. It really, really is cool and lovely uh, conditions here in the hall for the riders. There's Mader. I think, uh, <laughs> just chatting to Marlon Royster. Sits... Uh, just to his right. Marlon Royster is leading the women's competition, by the way. She's sitting eighth at the moment and absolutely flying along. It's uh, uh, certainly belying her, uh, her status as a first time, a rookie indoor racer, rookie online racer, first time racing in the digital world, she says, in any sort, sh shape or description, but uh, well, you wouldn't think it, the way she's riding at the moment. She's got plenty of uh, world's top professional bike riders, triathletes, and indeed mountain bike racers behind her at the moment. Gino Mader continuing to plow on here in his efforts to, to get on terms with Jason Osborne. But Osborne has extended his advantage. He's now approaching, what, 250 meters ahead of Thomas Steger. Hayden Wild, Gino Mader, Herman Pionsteiner, those riders riding in, in concert. Rado, ha uh, Rado Hollenstein leading the best of the rest, running sixth at the moment for Team Zurich. And over... 43, get touching 44 kilometers an hour average speed at the moment. It's, it's worth uh, uh, noting that Jason Osborne, who's around about 400 meters further up the road at the moment, is getting across the virtual tarmac at about 45, 46 kilometers an hour. So he's con continuing to extend his advantage, and it really is a, a wonderful powerhouse display by the German rider Jason Osborne, 27-year-old rider. Uh, you can uh, see how Rado Hollenstein is getting on. He's uh, running in sixth place at the moment. I wonder how much he's enjoying it. There we go. 
go. There is Rado. In the pain cave, or the pain attic, whatever it might be. Hollenstein doing a super job. Israel, uh, startup nation rider, of course, on the road. Veteran, 36 year old Swiss from Frauenfeld. Almost two meters tall, as I mentioned, so that'll be uh, scraping along the ceiling there. And Hollenstein's doing a really, really uh, impressive effort. He's running sixth at the moment. He's been, he's missed that group across that climb, that uh, brief climb, which will be a source of uh, uh, frustration and distraction to him. He's got Boris Stein for company at the moment, and they're running in sixth and seventh. Corin uh, Lebecki, team DSM rider, on the road. And uh, Corin racing with team Basel. Heading off to Team Jumbo Visma next year is an interesting move for her and 10th uh, in the world, 7th in the Olympics this year. Won the final stage of the Women's Giro back in June and Corin Lebecki is uh, plowing on, pressing on, trying to get on terms with the leading woman at the moment. It's uh, Marlon Royster who's uh, slipped 10th in the race but she's part of, well she hasn't so much slipped as she's part of a group. Uh, that is vying for eighth at the moment. Sean Bennett is in there. Marlon Reusser, as I've mentioned. Connie Loser, uh, Martin Van Riel, uh, Jakob Kadlitz, Adrian uh, Brifford. It's quite a de it's decent sized group. Six riders in that uh, in that move at the moment, and the only woman amongst them is uh, Marlon Reusser, who's. Uh, has the advantage, I suppose, of those other riders, and that's going to assist her in her efforts to try and uh, uh, win the uh, women's competition. Anna de Vette, the uh, Belgian triathlete for the Lugano squad, is going well, and by my calculations, is currently the second-placed uh, woman rider in 17th position in the in the race at the moment, pumping out over four watts per kilo. Marlon Royce here, I can tell you 3.7, well, it's just spiking up, so it's well over four watts per kilo on average uh, across the, the, the last kilometer that we've seen from uh, from Marlon Royce. There's a huge numbers, really, for the Swiss uh, National Road and Time Trial Champion. What a what an engine she's got. And she's got to take some beating. Thomas Steger, Gino Mader. Starting to stretch the elastic a little bit. Up front, Osborne, I can tell you, now showing, uh, coming up on 500 metres, almost gone half a kilometre, 436 metres at the moment over the, the wild Pernsteiner, uh, Gino Mader, Thomas Steger group. Rado Hollenstein, I can tell you, is starting to close the gap. I think Hollenstein has a really good shot of getting back on terms here. Himself and Boris Stein working well together and have got themselves to within about 100 metres. And uh, Mavi Garcia, uh, not the only rider, I think, who's in a pool of of discomfort and pain and suffering. Pernsteiner, always good when the road goes up. And we hit this climb again on the second time of asking. Halfway around this, uh, this second lap, and Lebecki looks in control of her effort. Hollenstein is looking at the video for the encouragement he needs to, to get on terms. There's nothing they can do about Osborne at the moment. Over half a kilometre clear of the best of the rest. It's uh, Steger, Pernsteiner, Wild, and uh, Gino Mader. Hollenstein now, well, he's probably the bones of about 200 metres behind his fellow countryman Mader in that group, but still running in a comfortable, uh, probably very uncomfortable sixth place, would probably be the, uh, the correct way to describe it. Abu Grimey looking stood still in the road there. Suspect we've got a little bit of an electronical for him. Could well be suffering with uh, some difficulties. You've got to have a good signal. Grimey running towards the back of, uh, of affairs at the moment, indeed. Uh, pretty much stood still. He too, as well as uh, Lukas Tomasek, suffering with some uh, electronic difficulties. That's prevented them from really showing us what they're capable of. One or two other riders a little bit further back than you might have expected at the moment. Some of the riders running two, three kilometers behind. That gives you such a sense of the uh, of the agony. That's really, and the, the extraordinary effort that's been put out. Look at Steger just spiking up over six watts per kilo very briefly. And as 
Jason Osborne hits the hill at the second time of asking the uh, the riders behind, albeit briefly, start to close the gap on the flying German rider. I think that uh, he'll reassert his advantage as they all end up on this 10% gradient. He's really dragging the the effort out and trying to maintain the same kind of uh, of cadence and the same kind of watts. Well, here's an opportunity, really, if anything, to step up the watts and. Gino Mader, that fluid uh, style of a practice road professional. What a breakthrough he's had in the sport, and what a what a star they've got. They've got a few stars at the moment. Uh, Swiss cycling's in a in a really good place. And Marta Bastianelli, the uh, former world champion. Interesting decorations on the roof of the garage, or whatever it is that her uh, pain cave is, and she's. Uh, Pressing on, just got a shot of Laura Chacon from Team Basel. Just alongside Jason Osborne, the leading individual competitor in this event as things currently stand. Just to remind you, Marlon Royster is leading the women's competition. She's got a fairly handy advantage now over Anna Devet. Probably getting on for a kilometer down. Just about 700 meters between the leading, uh, the, the, the first two women. And Jason Osborne's hairstyle is still intact. That's the main thing. Just about. That fan is doing a great job of keeping it all together. Osborne uh, over re-establishes his advantage of just over half a kilometer. Through the 20 kilometer mark uh, for Osborne. Just approaching the, uh, the halfway point in this event. It's just over 47 kilometers. A little way to go before we get to that. The end of this lap will be the halfway point. And for, uh, for Osborne, in the company of Boris Stein, their teammates. Stein running seventh at the moment, just to his, uh, his right. And Lebecki looking for that encouragement to continue the effort. What's the news coming? Well, she's uh, slipped her place. She's running in a group at the moment. Uh, 19th on the on the running order. 2.8 kilometers down the road from the from this man, Jason Osborne. Royce is 1.6 kilometers back. So just to get a, a sense of the the relative difference between the women. Royce is running ninth on the road, the virtual road. 1.6 kilometers back from Osborne. And uh, Hannah Devet is 2.7. So 1.1 kilometers between the first two women. Then Lebecki is next up. So uh, Lebecki with a great shot of, of maybe challenging for that second position. It's going to be tough to get on terms with this woman, Marlon Royster. Lebecki will get a little bit of, a, I think, encouragement that she's coming up and perhaps just timing her effort. How much has she saved for the the other laps, it just starts at such a rate and, and such a level of intensity. Osborne looks like he's on a different planet at the moment, doesn't he? He's, he's just uh, almost in dream world, soaking up the, the pain and just descending into a world of suffering. Just how effective and how helpful these tunes are helping the riders make the effort that's, uh, that's required. Gap's coming up on 700 meters now between Osborne and Steger, super effort. I think it's worth uh, recording though that Team Lugano have put no less than three riders into the chase. So Jason Osborne for Team Basel is doing all that he can possibly do to score the maximum points here. But uh, Steger, Wild and Pernstein are working together behind. And indeed, it's only two of those riders uh, that will score points for the team. It's the leading two men uh, from their team. But second and third across the line, well, that uh, looks like it's very much a possibility. Gino Mader has been detached, and he and Reto Hollenstein, two Team Zurich riders, are almost within touching distance. So Hollenstein, the Swiss rider, racing with Team Zurich, about to catch his fellow countryman Gino Mader for Team Zurich. And when that happens, even though they are uh, hundreds of kilometers apart, well, they will be joined 
in Union to try and see what they can do about racing to score maximum point for the points for, for Team Zurich. And uh, Marlon Reusser is, I think, odds on to be the top scoring woman. So Team Zurich in with a super shot, actually, of uh, taking the... the uh, the overall, or at least the team's competition here. For all that, it's going to be tough for them to get the leading man across the line. Marlon Reusser looks like she's in fine shape. Indeed, I wouldn't uh, rule out the possibility that she could get a little bit closer to the leading men as we get uh, closer to the, uh, the conclusion of this event. There's a world of hurt for everyone. Shackon is uh, pressing on and plowing on. Laura Shackon, 22nd in the event at the moment, and she's uh, running about uh, four or five hundred uh, meters behind Colin Lebecki. Sandra Keller is about 100, uh, 100 meters down from Colin Lebecki at the moment, and uh, Lebecki needs to find around about 300 meters to get on terms with Hannah Devet. That's in the race to be second amongst the women. It's uh, Marlon Reusser who is in a class of her own, really, at the head of affairs. But Redo Hollenstein has now managed to become uh, attached to Gino Mader. It's the battle for at least the two riders. Not so much a battle. These two riders running fifth and sixth. They are teammates. And just how much assistance, you know, what has Gino Mader uh, got left for the fight here? Because he was with the group running in second. We're across the line to complete two laps. Hit the halfway point. I'll tell you what, do not go down into the hall and do not tell anyone right now that they're only halfway. <laughs> they don't need to be reminded. Jason Osborne still managing to consistently put out over five and a half watt per, watts per kilo. Rado Hollenstein's able to ask questions, so he's clearly still got, uh, well, probably something approaching all five senses functioning, which given the sort of wattage outputs that he's cranking out there is no mean feat. Pulling his pain face. It's effective stuff, running fifth. Got Gino Mater for company. Could be good news for Mater to just, uh, if he can latch on and stay in touch here. But you know, when you start to suffer and start to lose the wheel, and yeah, you can uh, lose heart, but also just, well, the wheels can fall off completely. So it'll be interesting to see whether Gino Mater has managed to measure his effort, maybe recover ever so slightly. The opportunity for these minor recoveries not quite the same as road cycling out the road, is it? It's because you can't exactly just uh, promenade in the wheels and try and regain some of the uh, of the effort and the energy that you need to make an, a further push. You've got to keep riding. This is very much a time trial effort, and uh, no surprise really that it's re it's really suiting Jason Osborne, a man who's dedicated himself to rowing and has dabbled in cycling. Uh, an impressive level outdoors. He's, as I mentioned, he's done a little bit of uh, stagiering as uh, sort of a, uh, a trial period with the Quick Step squad, the Coin and Quick Step team this year. Some suggestion that he could conceivably be heading uh, to that team on a full-time basis next year, yet to be confirmed. And uh, Jason Osborne, though, has been a, a sixth-place finisher and indeed a sixth and eighth-place finisher in the German National Time Trial Championship. He wasn't uh, distracted by his activities on the water. Shackon and Marlon Royce are just taking the opportunity to dampen down. And now is when it really starts to hurt. All of that effort to this point has only brought you to halfway in the competition. Many of the riders still yet to cross the line to begin the third and penultimate lap of this 11.8 kilometer circuit. I tell you what, I have a funny feeling that uh, when we get into race two tomorrow, Jason Osborne's not going to be the only rider in the hole with his own fan. Aaron Steiner, familiar, uh, Familiar characteristics, really, for a rider who excels in the mountains. Top 10 finisher in Giro d'Italia 2020. He is a wonderful stage racer. He's a wonderful climber, great all-round bike rider. You wouldn't have thought this particular discipline of cycling would have suited him, but at the moment, he's absolutely flying. He's part of that group of three riders 
who are racing in the wake of Jason Osborne. That wake is starting to still because they're almost a kilometre behind. This is a remarkable effort here from Jason Osborne. Once again, to emphasise that it was no uh, no fluke, really. His victory in the World Championships at the end of, of uh, December last year. Steger Wild and Herman Pernsteiner slip now one kilometre behind Jason Osborne who has completed 26 kilometers of this event. So now well over the halfway point for him. Well into this third of four laps. Still maintaining his pace across the virtual tarmac at uh, over 45 kilometers an hour. And over six watts per kilo. And is Gino Mater talking to himself? Is he talking to the wall? Is he talking to, uh, to anyone around him? I suspect he's just trying to Give himself a little bit of a G up, a little bit of encouragement for the fight. In that little, that period where we're well beyond the start and it's starting to ache a little bit, but still a long way from the finish. It's just the point where riders would be looking for a little bit of a, an opportunity just to throttle back a little bit. Looks like he's doing a warm-up, doesn't he? It is remarkable. Of all the riders in the hall here, I don't really think that there is any rider who looks as relaxed, and yet he's the one that's putting at the highest, uh, highest level. The wind machine doing its work. Looks like he stepped straight from the... Uh, making a video for an 80s boy band. And did a solid job for Team Basel. Boris Stein, his uh, teammate, his nearest place teammate at the moment, is running in seventh place. And uh, he'll score seventh place points. Were that to be maintained through to the uh, conclusion of affairs. Franz Lushke, best placed of the uh, Team Basel women, is, of course, um, the aforementioned Corin Lebecki. He's now about 400 metres behind Hannah Devet. So Devet looking in a more sort of a comfortable position in that second place amongst the women. Hannah Devet for Team Lugano. Team Lugano who have Steger and Hayden Wilde and indeed Herman Pernsteiner running in line astern. Those three riders packing well together, working well together. Great team teamwork. Great, st uh, what's the strategy here? I think it's simply to work together, to share the effort, and to keep uh, keep the rest at bay. I was going to say to keep Jason Osborne on a tight leash, but he's uh, well, he's gone into the distance. Hollenstein racing clear of uh, well with Gino Mater. He's still got Mater for company, and this looks like Boris Stein, who's uh, also attached himself as well. So it's a three-way battle, if indeed it be a battle. Uh, for fifth on the road at the moment. Stein has managed to just latch his way onto this triathlete. Holland Stein steps off the front of this group for the first time, I think, uh, since, well, I don't know how long. Is he suffering there a little bit? Gino Mader's recovered. No, it's Hollenstein that's on the front of the group. Yep. Yeah, apologies for that. I think this is Mader just slipping in behind. That would make sense. So it's Hollenstein that con continues to set the tempo amongst this group. They've hoovered up uh, Gino Mader. Boris Stein along for the ride. Sean Bennett now running in eighth. Or in that group have really kind of worked consistently well together, haven't they? Sean Bennett, Marlon Royce, what an exceptional uh, uh, performance really it is by Royce. I mentioned the 30-year-old uh, Swiss time trial specialist who's really only been able to focus her full attention on cycling in the last couple of years. She qualified as a doctor, she's uh, a surgeon, and indeed went back to working as a doctor during lockdown and during the, uh, the pandemic. She's been involved in uh, her politics as an advocate for for the environment and for uh, 
as, as, as Green Party, I think, uh, involved in college and, uh, well, just a very interesting character, to say the least. And she's absolutely flying here. She's consistently running in the top eight, nine riders at the moment. Martin van Riel, as I mentioned, is also in that group. 28-year-old Belgian. Bronze in the European Championships in uh, triathlon uh, back in 2018, but uh, fourth agonizingly close to a medal in triathlon in the uh, Tokyo Olympics just a few months ago. This uh, very different prospect altogether, showing no lack of facility on the indoor trainer. Here comes the hill. Third time of asking. The penultimate grind up this 10% gradient. And, for, and it will be instructive, really, to see if Gino Mader, who would uh, get up, he gets up these short, sharp little grippers better than most. Ordinarily, I think, probably better than uh, Rado Hollenstein, who is a unit. He's a big man, but he's got uh, fantastic efficiency on the indoor trainer. Great watts per kilo numbers coming out from Rado Hollenstein at the moment, just spiking up over uh, six watts per kilo momentarily. Gino Mader putting out something similar, albeit he's got fewer kilograms to carry up the hill. Boris Stein as well is just uh, gravitating closer to the front of that group. This, uh, this group of three, I can tell you, are about 1,100 meters clear of the Marlon Reusser group. As Reusser approaches the bottom of that hill, she hits the front of that group, just ahead of Sean Bennett, World Tour Pro. Martin Van Riel, Connie Loeser also in that, uh, in that move. Well, Van Riel actually and uh, Loeser have just slipped a couple of hundred meters behind the Sean Bennett and Marlon Reusser uh, job. Yeah, I've just been, uh, had my attention directed to the performance, great performance indeed, by one of the amateurs in this race. Just three amateur riders, uh, but uh, performing with great distinction, Jurgen Foley, the Swiss rider running in 16th position at the moment, and has got some very accomplished professional uh, mountain bike riders, triathletes, and indeed road riders. Uh, behind him on the road at the moment. It's a great effort from uh, Jürgen Foley. Up front, it's all about Jason Osborne. Now 1.38 kilometers clear of Thomas Steger. Two Austrian riders racing for Team Lugano in the company of a New Zealander, Hayden Wild. And Wild spiking up over seven watts per kilo, albeit briefly, but that's what's required and just uh, throws it onto an absolutely massive gear and they plunge down this descent at virtual speeds in excess of 70 kilometers per hour in hot pursuit. The road flattens out for Jason Osborne. He settles into that 45, 46 kilometer an hour effort. Corin Lebecki is still fighting the good fight. Running 20th at the moment for Team Basel just slipped behind Alessandra Keller, uh, but, uh, well, they're now about 600 meters behind Hannah Devet. So Devet looks as if she's secure in that second position amongst the women at the moment for Team Logano. Uh, Karen Lebecki running in third amongst the women, but in the company now of Alessandro Keller. They've got a little bit of daylight between themselves and Mavi Garcia is running fifth of the women. Laura Chacon, and next up then Susanna Zafarova, Nina Deron and Marta Bastianelli running towards the back of the order at the moment, but still uh, plowing on regardless. Former world road race champion. And a remote location, racing for Team Luzerne. On the Luzerne circuit, Bastianelli is uh, pumping it out. Garcia too, the former Spanish champion. Excellent bike cover there. Marlon Reusser is the powerhouse, though, that leads this competition and leads it comfortably from ninth uh, amongst uh, uh, ninth overall amongst these competitors. Roy Reusser's effort still consistently at the three and a half to four watts per kilo uh, uh, kind of numbers, which would challenge most uh, male amateurs and indeed quite a few uh, male professional cyclists, as is uh, being evidenced here. Jason Osborne's just moving back up approaching the six watts per kilo mark. He's heading towards the final lap and no sign of any diminishing of the effort here. And that's what's remarkable about Jason Osborne is that he's been able to maintain this effort. He didn't uh, 
uh, race into it too early. Gave it about, uh, what, a half a kilometre before he started to assert his authority. And the elastic snapped, disappeared up the road. 1.3 kilometres to the good. And he is absolutely flying. Steger, Pernsteiner and Hayden Wild now, uh, well, approaching one and a half kilometres back. In actual fact, Steger has put a little bit of distance between himself and the others. So Steger, in the bragging rights amongst the Team Lugano trio, looks like he's just detached himself and put a little bit of uh, distance, as I say, between himself uh, and Hayden Wild and Hermann Pernsteiner. So Wild and Hermann Pernsteiner will battle it out, I think, to decide which one of the Team Lugano riders is the second counting male. Just to remind you, it's the top two male times from each team and the top female time that are going to, uh, that are going to count in terms of the team competition. Not so much their time, but their position, you know, their position across the line. Here's the kind of core temperatures. Uh, this, uh, the core company here have a special unit to try and give you a sense of the core temperature of riders uh, in excess of 38 and a half degrees, which is, well, it's scary, actually. It's scary kind of numbers, Then that's why those riders are having to hydrate. Might only be an hour, but it's going to have an effect on performance. They need to uh, hydrate as much as possible, try and keep control of those core temperatures. Fascinating metrics that are being uh, acquired uh, by this, uh, this little unit that goes on the heart rate straps of the riders. Takes the surface temperature and sweats and uh, has a little algorithm and uh, all sorts of uh, complicated mathematical calculations that gives a fairly accurate uh, core temperature number. And Osborne. Well, his core temperature is going to be as hot as anyone because his pace is as hot as anyone. Jason Osborne racing home free and racing clear at the moment at well over 5 watts per kilo. Now 35 kilometres completed of the event. It's a 47 kilometre race, remember. So down to the final 12 kilometres at uh, the way that he gets across the virtual tarmac. A little to touch it. Approaching this uh, final lap now. Jason Osborne just through the final bend uh, and in pursuit of him, Hayden Wild running fourth at the moment in the company of Hermann Pernsteiner. They too are in, in the wake of Thomas Steger. Steger is solo in second at the moment. This is Pernsteiner and Hayden Wild of Team Lugano. What a fetching little uh, red and white jersey on their avatar. This is Steger, the Austrian rider who's did a really solid job and looking odds on now for this second place finish. 29 year old Austrian, Jenbach. Fifth in the world long distance triathlon uh, championships in 2021. And second in the European middle distance championships. You would imagine that uh, amongst the triathletes it would be those, those riders who ride Olympic distance and the, the shorter distances that might prevail in this style of competition. But that's not the way it's working out here. Steger's certainly got, worked out how to compete online to compete on Ruby. I wonder just how many uh, riders and teams will be accumulating experience here, have a little bit of a debrief tonight, have a little bit of a think about it, and how are strategies going to change and alter across the three days of competition. This, just to remind you, the first of five days uh, of racing, five pro races, sorry, three days of racing, five races. Uh, tomorrow we've got uh, uh, races around virtual Lugano at uh, 1300 hours, 1 p.m. Central European time, and then at 7 p.m. in Europe. Uh, we race around Luz uh, Lausanne, and then on Sunday, uh, races 4 and 5, 11.30 in the morning, then 4 o'clock uh, Central European time. Basel and Zurich to conclude. Get the drinks in quick enough, or often enough. Osborne still Look at those numbers, five and a half, five point seven, up over six watts per kilo. Looks like he's right to the shops, doesn't he? It really is remarkable. Now, what an engine! And I don't doubt. I think that uh, were the Decoin Quick Step squad not to pick him up for this upcoming road season, which seems to be the the plan for uh, for Jason Osborne. But certainly, there'll be one or two other uh, World Tour outfits that'll be very interested to see what they could do with his particular physical characteristics and what uh, where he'd slot into the day-to-day -day running of a of a racing team. Certainly for uh, Marlon Reusser, that's already well understood. Dedication now to 
her cycling career is paying dividends and it's uh, certainly paying dividends here as she heads towards victory amongst the women as well. She too is approaching, she's now approaching the final lap. She's over three and a half kilometers behind Osborne, but I will remind you, she's racing in the company of Sean Bennett, uh, a world tour professional. The team Quebec Assos, 25 year old rider. Team Quebec at next dash. Morning crisis, of course. What's the opportunity going to be for those riders. Jason Osborne, head down and going for glory. Still showing around about that six watts per kilo number. It really is a remarkable effort. No doubt when he heads into the, uh, the wind tunnel and gets his time trial bike and his time trial position, honed to perfection, his entire focus is on. Uh, just what are these riders capable of sustaining through this final lap? As I mentioned, there just didn't seem to be any let up in the 45 kilometers an hour across this tarmac, still a flat road really for uh, for Jason Osborne. So that's a, that's a number that tells us that it's a consistent effort, 5.66 watts per kilo. And down to the final, inside the final 10 kilometers now. Uh, for Osborne. Gino Mater's going well, isn't he? Well, he's uh, had that little blip, but he's been picked up by his teammate, his team Zurich teammate, Redo Hollenstein. Has Mater managed to recover? I think we can catch up with him now. So, we have forsprochen, we nutzen die Gelegenheit, das, was we im normalen Radsport nicht können. So, we promised, we try to talk with some athletes what is uh, impossible during a quite normal race. But, uh, well, this is unique, and so why not talk to Gino Meda? Gino, um, you like this race? Uh, I pretty much like it, but I kind of hate Osborne, because he absolutely killed it. Um, but I think I'm still fighting for best of the rest. Ah, not even. But it was a lot of fun the first five minutes, and then it got hard. So, some more minutes uh, to go, position is uh, quite okay, or you still uh, want to get some more, at least? I mean, I try to work with my teammate Reto, but it's really difficult over the distance, I think it's like 700 kilometers. And he has a bit of delay, because right now I'm attacking and he's not following that, it's a shame. Also, Sie sehen es, meine Damen und Herren, er hat Spaß, Spaß auch wenn es eine ganze Menge wehtut. Er hat Spaß, 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 er in this, uh, in this competition. It is the wonderful world of online virtual bike racing. Gino Mader running in fifth place at the moment for uh, Team Zurich, his uh, fellow countryman and Team Zurich teammate, Reto Hollenstein, running pretty much in line astern within 10 meters of each other, but uh, making that effort and, well, it's, it's tough to share the workload. I think they'll work out strategies. There will be a finessing and a, a reimagining and a, a, a thinking and a, a lots of debriefs, I think, following this particular race, because indeed the Ruby uh, platform is developing, has done quite a bit over the last year, and they've uh, introduced uh, drafting, which I think has been a bit of a game changer. Boris Stein is starting to, uh, well, he's working hard to stay on terms here. A bit of a danger moment for uh, himself and uh, Gino Mader. Well, Stein to stay on terms with Gino Mader. Team Basel. That's good news for Jason Osborne, is it? Although he's just doing his own thing out front. 1.3 kilometers to the good on this final lap. And down to the final seven kilometers of racing for Osborne. But uh, the second counting rider for Team Basel, Boris Stein, is having to make an effort to try and get back on terms with Gino Mader and Reto Hollenstein. Osborne working well. Laura Chak on to his left-hand side. Teammates with Team Basel.
Shotgun at the moment running 22nd overall, just behind Mavi Garcia. Uh, just in front of uh, them is Conor Lebecki. Then um, Lebecki running uh, in on terms with Alessandra Keller in pursuit of Hannah Devet. So there's quite the scrap for second and third positions amongst the women. Keller and Lebecki trying to see what they can do. Lebecki is the top scoring rider for Team Basel uh, amongst the women. Our teammate uh, Laura Chacon, who's here in the hall, is what? And that uh, we're just over a kilometer down. So Lebecki's certainly, I think, going to be the top scoring team Basel rider. But for, for Osborne, I think there'll be a certain amount of anxiety uh, when he discovers that the next two riders behind him, albeit they're well over a kilometer adrift, Steger is racing alone and racing towards second place for Team Lugano and doing a, a really solid job. Hayden uh, Wild and Herman Pernsteiner are racing together in third and fourth positions at the moment. And that uh, will be, well, two of those three riders are going to be the top scoring riders for the Team Lugano squad. And the best of the Team Lugano women is Hannah Devet, who's heading towards second in the women's competition. So it'll be fascinating to see exactly how we top the numbers up. Jason Osborne has managed to make it over the climb at the fourth and final time of asking. He plunges down the hill at speeds approaching and indeed in excess of 70 kilometers per hour. And heading towards the finish line now into the final what, five and a half kilometers of racing. Important not to uh, go straight on there. Otherwise you end up in the drink. Thomas Steger takes, uh, well, he's heading towards second place, as I, as I mentioned. He's got around about uh, seven, 800 meters advantage over the Pernsteiner and Wild duo. Little uh, inter-team rivalry and race towards the final podium position. Then we've got Mader Hollenstein and Boris Stein. And indeed, Mader looks like he's detached himself from Rado Hollenstein. And that could be as a result of that, just that little bit of, uh, of delay, perhaps. Great recovery by Mader, isn't it? Detached by the Pernsteiner Wild Steger group, has managed to re realign himself with Rado Hollenstein and if anything has recovered a bit and made her time for an interview here in the hall. South Sports Hallop. We're in Zurich. Many of the other riders are scattered to the four winds across the uh, across the globe and we're racing around Luzerne. Tomorrow's race uh, as I reminded you tomorrow's first of uh, two races takes place on the virtual Lugano circuit which is choppier than this one, more of a climber's circuit. That'll be interesting to the likes of Herman Pernsteiner. Gino Mader won't be afraid of it either. Currently running in fifth place, Pernsteiner in fourth. Will more climbs perhaps bring them a little bit closer to Jason Osborne? Will Osborne be able to handle the big mountains and the bigger hills as we get towards the, uh, uh, a circuit that suits riders in different ways? This is Marlon Royster who is absolutely flying. Currently uh, maintaining that position in ninth now. Lost a little bit of daylight between herself and Sean Bennett. Bennett has saved something up for this final lap and a half and he's detached himself from Marlon Royster. He's headed off up the road and uh, Royster, well so many of the riders are now riding in ones and twos, groups one. It really has shattered, doesn't it? Uh, all the riders are suffering and it's all starting to disintegrate and into individual time trials and little two-up efforts. Marlon Royster is running in this fine ninth position. Comfortably in the first third of the competitors. And uh, by miles, the leading woman here. Down to the final three kilometers for uh, Jason Osborne. Three, what, three and a half K, something like that to go. He plunges down, another little descent get a bit of relief from this, but I think he's going to, he's not going to throttle back, continuing to pump out in excess of five and a half watts per kilo. The consistency has been what's so remarkable about this effort from Jason Osborne. Claims not to have done that much cycling this year. What cycling he's done out on the road has been uh, fundamentally about doing sort of steady long miles to maintain 
uh, condition for his rowing activities. And he said when he did do his, uh, just chatting to him before the event, when he did do his, his work for the uh, Decoigny Quick Step squad in the second half of the year, the, the, the intensity of road racing just took a little bit of getting used to. Went in the break in his very first uh, race, actually, and he said just uh, needed to learn about how to manage his effort across a, a long road race. But uh, really enjoyed the learning activity, and looks like he's picking up a couple of riders. He's lapping, putting more than 11 kilometers into uh, into riders out there. That's what's so impressive about Jason Osborne. He's in a, on a, di in a different league on a different planet. There's no doubt about it. One and a half kilometers up the road from Thomas Steger, who himself is doing a really, really amazing job because he's um, now, what, about eight, uh, well, approaching a full kilometre clear of his teammate and fellow countryman, Hermann Pernsteiner. Who's going to get that third place? I think that's the, the real issue in doubt at the moment. And the fascinating final podium position is one to, uh, to conjure with here. No doubt about it, the leading man and the leading woman, I think what's great as well actually is that the leading man and the leading woman are both in the hall here today. So we're going to get a quick reaction at the conclusion of the, of the event. Osborne now within touching distance of what is going to be a famous first victory in the digital Swiss Five of 2021. This event has been reimagined reconstituted, reconstructed, and I think it's a, it's a concept that's set to be developed further and is set, I think, to really capture the imagination of sports fans, cyclists, of course, but I think sports fans of all hues are going to get a kick out of this one, especially as he is very much a specialist uh, rower, second, as I said, in the, uh, the men's lightweight double skulls at the Tokyo Olympics. Osborne now cruising towards the conclusion, just over a kilometre between himself and Glory now. Just under indeed, just a little bit less than that for Jason Osborne. Coming up to the conclusion of the effort, he can start to compose his victory speech. Probably been doing that since the first lap. Down inside the final kilometre, indeed inside the final 500 metres for Jason Osborne. As he works his way through to the finish line, he's going to get those virtual hands in the air. I think he might even put the actual hands in the air. 200 meters remaining as he winds and twists his way out onto the uh, seafront here. And Jason Osborne through the final bend, approaching the finish line. The first of the digital Swiss Five races is going to fall to the world champion. Jason Osborne can. Finally relax the pedals, arms in the air, and that one it looks like it didn't take that much out of him. What an extraordinary effort. Now there's a round of applause from the other riders, including Gino Maders running sixth in this competition, has still much to fight for for team honours here, but there's no doubting the man who's got the victory. Team Basel scored maximum points. Still much work to do for the likes of Boris Stein to try and uh, score well for Team Basel, and they've also uh, got uh, their leading woman rider, who's Karin Lebecki, racing remotely and racing potentially for a top three finishing position. We're watching with interest to see uh, not just the second rider across the line, it's uh, Thomas Steger within about 800 metres of the finish line, probably a little bit less than that in actual fact, as we look towards Steger to conclude this event and score an excellent uh, haul of points for Team Lugano. We'll see, can we um, get a quick word with the men's winner while we look to see how Marlon Royster's getting on. Let's hear now from Jason Osborne. So first of all, congrats, Jason Osborne, great race. Nino told us you killed them. What did you do? I don't know, I just started fast and then I saw I had a gap and uh, I thought I might just continue and then this happened, I don't know, and then I just kept pushing and uh, yeah, could uh, hold the pace quite well and in the end it uh, yeah, worked out for me. Is this the biggest difference to road racing? Uh, if you start very fast you can uh, make a gap and uh, bring it easier home than on the road? Yeah, basically. On the road you have the peloton, you can't just 
move through it, like you can, but it, it takes time. Here you just move through the avatar, so it's a lot easier. But um, yeah, those races are always fast, hard, and uh, that's what it's about in the racing. Yeah. How was it now racing on a real track? I guess it was a little bit different. And uh, well, you just uh, could see where to race through Lucerne. Um, your first impression? Yeah, I think it's it's quite cool. Actually, I could remember some some areas even because we do the World Cup in rowing in, uh, at the Rotsee in Luzern. So we, I was in the city a couple of times and um, yeah, I could notice some things here and there, which is quite nice. Quasi ein Heimspiel. So, like well, what an amazing game, achievement uh, by Jason Comets, Osborne. Great achievement too by Thomas Steger as he uh, has uh, been home now. He's home now in second place, just under two minutes behind Jason Osborne. And we're watching with interest to see who's going to be third across the line. Herman Pernsteiner, Hayden Wild in close attendance. Two teammates, private bragging rights for who's going to be the second counting male rider for Team Lugano as we head towards the finish line. Inside 500 meters to go for the uh, for the second place rider. And it's Pernsteiner and Hayden Wild who are now on the riverfront inside 300 meters to go. Who's going to get it? Marlon Reusser is heading towards the victory for the women. And who's we're inside 200 meters for our uh, second place rider? Well, Pernsteiner and Wild in this little private battle. Who's got some fight still through to the finish line? for this final position on the men's podium. As we go through to the line, we try and get a sense of it. I think it's Hayden Wilde that's just about got it. We're just getting the news through indeed. Nothing to separate them within a tenth of a second, but it's uh, Hayden Wilde indeed that has scooped that final podium position and scooped the second counting points position for uh, the Team Lugano men as we wait for the appearance of the next rider. Boris Stein is still at the road and racing to glory today. Top five position on offer for him. Gino Mader is going to give a bit of an effort too. Marlon Reusser is just about 2.2 kilometers from the finish line. So Gino Mader is going to press on here to get, uh, see, can he just about overhaul Boris Stein? It's not quite going to happen. Stein finishes in fifth place. Gino Mader in sixth. Rado Hollenstein is going to be next to the line. He's just about, uh, what, two? 100 meters from the finish line, a little bit less than that in actual fact. Reto Hollenstein running uh, in seventh. And Hollenstein's done a really solid job uh, through here. He's going to be the second counting male rider for Team Zurich. And uh, Marlon Reusser to come as the leading woman. I think that team have a super shot at uh, the team glory. Hollenstein can finally relax at home in the pain cave. It's been a suffer fest that has paid dividends for the seventh place finisher. Sean Bennett is uh, the next man racing remotely for Team Lugano. He's already seen what a great job his teammates uh, Thomas Steger and Hayden Wild and indeed Herman Pernsteiner have done. And uh, they're going to score some big points uh, today. It's Bennett that's coming home now within 400 meters of the finish line. Marlon Royster, I can tell you, for uh, those watching the women's competition, is within one and a half kilometers of the finish of her effort as well. Marta Bastianelli has quite some considerable way to go at this point towards the back of the order. But uh, Sean Bennett, well, the rich get richer, don't they? The better you are, the uh, the more time you have to recover, the more time you have to, the earlier you can think about relaxing. Sean Bennett is among those riders as he was in the final hundred meters. What an effort indeed it's been from all these riders. And Team Lugano with uh, one of the nattiest avatar colors uh, combinations, I think. They're great jerseys. And it's home and hosed now for Sean Bennett in eighth place. Marlon Reusser is now under the kite and into the final kilometer for the leading woman in this competition. It has been a powerhouse performance by the uh, Swiss national road and time trial champion. Silver medal, as I've already told you, in the Olympics and indeed in the World Championships. What a star she is. What an amazing performer. She claims this is her very first uh, online bike race. Tell you what, it's not going to be her last. She's got another four to do in the next three days, she's already mentioned to us. And indeed, I think she is, will uh, have developed quite the appetite for this kind of racing. It's been a really storming performance. She's run with some of the best uh, male athletes indeed in a mountain bike time tri uh, triathlon 
and indeed in road racing competition here today and she's put many of them behind her as she has really taken to this like a duck to water she's smiling now because she's miles up the road and inside the final 500 meters down onto the riverfront and approaching the final 300 meters for Marlon Royster. The crowd are going to bring her home and she's going to get her hands in the air. Marlon Royster has been in an absolute class of her own just as Jason Osborne has dominated the male event. Marlon Royster has been up the road, clear of the rest almost since the very beginning and she has confirmed her status as the leading woman in the Digital Swiss Five. The first competition here in Luzerne is going to fall to uh, Marlon Royce around the final bend and into the final 100 meters. She'll get her arms in the air. Celebration for Marlon Royce. So the victory falls to Switzerland. And it looks like we're, we've caught up with our winner now. So, Alan, I think it would have been the first time to uh, do an interview already during the last K. Everything under control. I didn't understand. Yes, I, th I think yes. Yeah, I, I was a bit sad that uh, I was left alone. <laughs> I mean, it's not so much fun <laughs> to just ride along on your own. So, who was in front this? Uh, Sam? Oh man, that's not kind. <laughs> It was not nice to attack me. But I think it was not nice uh, from your side to attack so many men and uh, left, leave them all behind. I attacked many men. I'm sorry, I don't understand you. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy. So, look, you enjoyed the race. Uh, this <laughs> is kind of racing. To be so happy. Not so happy with Joel better for disappearing up the road, but... Uh, yeah, it was a good point. She put a fair few other competitors behind her and she certainly put the leading, uh, or at least the second place woman, by some distance and daylight behind her. I can tell you Hannah Devet is heading towards uh, 17th in, co in this competition. Franz Luschke will be the next rider home in 16th place. Hannah Devet will uh, be the second place uh, woman for Team Lugano. That could be significant given the performance of the uh, the man and their scoring positions. It's going to take us a while, I think, to work out the team competition. So I'm not sure we're going to have it, uh, the full results to you before the end of our broadcast here, but goes to the Digital Swiss 5 website for uh, full updates on the results uh, over the next uh, hour or so. We'll have those to you. Lushka is within the final three, uh, 150 metres. Anna Devet next, uh, next up. Corinne Lebecki is scrapping for that final podium position for Team Basel. That too could be significant. Jason Osborne has been home a while at this point, but a podium finish for Corinne Lebecki could be very, very important for Team Basel in the, uh, in the team competition. And she has managed to distance and put some uh, significant daylight between herself and Alessandro Keller, who she was running with for, for quite a while. So Keller has been uh, distanced. Lebecki's heading to third. Hannah Devet is, well, already home. Job done. And second for the Belgian triathlete. And she finishes second on the day for Team Lugano. So there you have it. There's confirmation of the finishing order at the conclusion of our first race in the Digital Swiss 5. Luzerne has been claimed by Jason Osborne ahead of uh, the, well, the full order is not quite as we saw it. I think it's Thomas Steger indeed that got second, wasn't it? Then Hayden Wilde, Herman Pernstein or Boris Stein, uh, Gino Mader, Reto Hollenstein and the rest. And the leading woman, uh, Marlon Reusser, uh, crossed the line by quite a significant distance. Uh, yeah, let's scroll through some of the other names. Royster, as I mentioned, in ninth place. Tenth across the line, Martin Van Riel, the uh, Olympic medalist for Team Luzerne in the triathlon and in the top ten amongst the 27 uh, riders and indeed the three amateur competitors in here. Connie Loser getting up and getting across the line to complete in 11th place. Sami Ursuler uh, for Team Lausanne in 12th position ahead of Jakob Kadletz of the Czech Republic in 13th. 
Uh, Adrian Briffer is uh, 14th finisher, and what a great effort indeed for the leading amateur rider. Jorgen Foley in a fine 15th position ahead of Franz Luschke of Team Basel. Hannah De Vett, as I mentioned, the leading, or sorry, the second placed woman in 17th place ahead of Colin Lebecki. Uh, one position, one position further up on the podium. Uh, Jan Saska is through home and hosed and finished for Team Lausanne in 19th position. We're waiting for the arrival of our fourth place woman now, Alessandro Keller of Team Lausanne is just about to uh, to finish and indeed i think she's got a score for her team with that uh, with that effort mavi garcia is within touching distance of the finish line she's the next uh, rider we're going to see home to the finish line the on a btc lubana uh, team rider the 37 year old spanish competitor what a fantastic rider indeed she's been. What a great Indian summer she's had to her career. Great performance in Strada Bianca, of course, uh, last year. Great second place finish. And she's taken some significant victories in her uh, her career. Great win in Giro della Miglia not so long ago indeed. Likes to race in, uh, in Italy, does the Spanish rider. Likes to race in Switzerland as well, albeit in a virtual sense. National road and time trial champion of Spain. Second on a stage of Tour de l'Ardèche uh, as well. So Garcia is still about a kilometer to go to the finish line. So she's uh, racing for bragging rights, really, with her, her teammate on the road, her teammate at Team Luzerne, Marta Bastianelli, currently running in 23rd position. Laura Chacon of, uh, of Team Basel is going to be the counting rider. So in 22nd position, just over a kilometer to the line, Laura Chacon is going to be, I believe, a counting rider for Team Basel. And that, again, could be Oh, sorry, apologies. It's um, Corin Lebeck. He's already through and ho uh, home at this point. So I think the leading positions among the team competition probably already decided. And they've got a little bit of uh, the beads are flying in the abacus to work out exactly who's got the victory uh, on this occasion in team competition. No doubt about the victors uh, amongst the men and women. Jason Osborne clear by almost two minutes from Thomas Steger, while Marlon Reusser. In ninth position overall for Team Zurich. And what a good uh, three minutes up the road, just under three minutes clear of Hannah Devet. So dominant performance too for the local favorite, the home superstar, Marlon Reusser. Still riders, numerous riding in the, uh, in the hole. Others have stopped. Some are just conducting very gentle little cool downs and warm downs and others are continuing to plow on towards the conclusion. So Mavi Garcia has made it through to the finish line, uh, has completed the event in 22nd uh, position of the 29 riders that took to the start line. Next up, we'll, uh, very shortly, we'll see uh, Laura Chacon will be home. She's completed indeed. Marta Bastianelli also at this point has uh, made it through to the finish line. And uh, Roland Zuger, 25th of our riders home uh, this evening. Later, just uh, in time for a little bit of a chat with Marlon Reusser as they try to analyze just what, uh, what an effort that was and what an enjoyable experience on some level it was. Great satisfaction in just uh, the athletic challenge that they've answered. Nina Daron about to complete her effort. And time to just promenade to the line, I think, for Nina. It's just a case of getting home at this point and maybe trying to save a bit of energy for tomorrow. I think we're all a bit exhausted after that, aren't we? What uh, an effort it's been indeed for, uh, for all of these riders.
Nina Derham is uh, through, has uh, completed 14 Luzerne, still out there, still racing to glory. It's probably worth uh, noting that a couple of riders have uh, suffered with mechanical or electronical issues. Luca Thomas, Lukas Tomasek was one, Zabu uh, Grimet was another we saw stood by the side of the road, so we're not going to see a uh, completion from them. Andreas Landolt is uh, still out there. Zuzana Zafarova is ploughing on regardless, the Czech uh, mountain bike rider still has work to do to get to the finish. They're preparing, I can tell you, the presentation very shortly of... Yeah, let's go for the winner's ceremony and uh, present some trophies to the winning riders amongst the men and women. It's time for the victory ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the winner of the first stage of uh, the Digital Swiss Five and uh, start with the category Woman. Welcome and congratulations to the wise uh, Olympic champion representing Switzerland. Congrats, Marlon Reusser! The prizes uh, will be given by Andre uh, Burri representing the host city of uh, Lucerne. Welcome and uh, as well, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the first stage together with Marlon. Uh, welcome and congrats to the world champion representing uh, Germany, Jason Osborn. And uh, as well, the prizes uh, by the representative of our host city of uh, Lucerne, Andre Buri. Marlon Reusser and Jason Osborn. Oh, I wonder what's in the goodie bag. They definitely earned their uh, fondue set and their, and their watches or whatever else they have in there. And uh, that's it. What an amazing uh, conclusion to this event. Let's uh, just honor once more these wonderful performances from Jason Osborne and Marlon Royce. We'll be seeing them in action again tomorrow. Quick reminder, the first of our two races is on air at 1300 hours Central European time. We've got Lugano and Lausanne to go tomorrow. The next two races in the Digital Swiss 5. My name's Declan Quigley. It's been my great pleasure to bring it to you this evening. We'll be back tomorrow, but for now, it's goodbye.